What's up, pals? Welcome to another episode of the Your Random Pal channel. And today, it's the most wonderful time of the year. No, not Christmas. Something much, much better than Christmas. I'm talking the Trans Am Nationals in Fairborn, Ohio. Yes. It's where all the birds, firebirds that is, migrate to in August. This yearly event, and this is the 39th year for it. As you can see, it's pretty early in the morning since there's a couple cars out here that have their covers on still. But as they say, the early bird gets the worm and I'm gonna try and get some good video for you early in the morning before they get the DJ out and start blaring some music. So let's check out all these beauties. Here we have a 96 bird. And as you can see, it's a pace car, Daytona 500, uh, the February 16th, 1997 Daytona 500. So I ta recall talking to the owner, this is the only one in existence. So it's, it's a very interesting uh, thing to maybe do some history on, do some research on. But it's, it's really cool to see it out here. Like the bird, uh, decal right on the front here you don't see the bird decals too much on the fourth generations so here we have a nice pair of uh formulas here the, with the twin scoops this is a 79 and a 78 it's a nice pairing right here you can see them in the same color but different years maybe they're buddies or something since they parked next to each other this one here it's it's got a white interior on it and over on this one here is a different color. Looks like a, a black velour interior in here. And the, the neat thing about these uh, formulas, you can see on the bottom here, it's got the formula graphic on both of them. So then let's make, what uh, differentiates the formula from the Trans Am, they're both uh, powerful machines with V8s but they got their own distinctive styling and we can't leave out this blue bird here that's also a formula with its twin scoops and t-tops the other ones are hard top and then we get into the bandit style Trans Am it's not in the special edition class so it's I guess not a true bandit Trans Am because these are these cars out here are grouped by classes. They tech them and they put them in uh, classes according to their year and their modifications and stuff. So this out here is not the special edition class. I'm actually in the special edition modified class. There's two classes for special editions. And down this row, we got a row of pace cars. You can see there's a 4.9 turbo. it would be a 301 Pontiac V8 under the hood. Unless they're modified, of course, but those are probably stock. This is a, most pace cars you're gonna see gathered together at one time is here at the Trans Am Nationals. That one there is a Indy pace car, and this one here is a Daytona 500. And this is, it's kind of unique styling here because you got the white and the black, but if you look inside, you got the red and black seats in it. They're Recaros, so those those are the nice sporty seats. Plus, you got this uh, black that's on the top part here around the T-tops. And they put louvers on this one, which is uh, it really goes well with the, the black uh, trim on it. 
And here we have a Daytona 500 that's a 79 10th anniversary Trans Am. The unique thing about the 10th anniversary Trans Am is you look at their hood bird, it goes beyond the hood and it actually goes on the fenders here. So if you see a, one of those birds, that's a 10th anniversary Trans Am hood bird. And all the 10th anniversaries are this uh, two-tone silver charcoal collar and had the little red outline on it. And then it had the silver interior. These are pretty luxurious cars for back in 79. I think they had, they, you could get them pretty loaded with options and stuff. And the 79s, these wheels here, they're called the turbo wheels. This is the first year they were available and they were, to my knowledge, only available on the 10th anniversary Trans Am until the following year. Now behind me is one very bad, bad bird. I'm talking, this is <coughs> a monster. I've heard it run. If you actually watch my YouTube shorts, I've got a clip of it driving by. So check those out. But anyway, this is a 67 Firebird. So it's first gen. I mean, <laughs> it's radically altered. I mean, you got the lip spoiler, the bulges out in the fenders. I mean, you got this big hood scoop Callan duct and it says Ram Air 5. So that would be a 400 motor that was a crate engine offered by Pontiac back in the day. It's very rare. It wasn't factory installed, but you could order it from the, like the parts counter. And some people did. They put them in their, you know, late 60s Pontiacs. It's usually because that's when the time it came out. And, I mean, this is cool, cool, cool. I mean, side pipe exhaust. Like I said, Ram Air 5, that's a very desirable motor. You look inside of this thing, it looks like a jet fighter. There's all kind of switches and gauges. I mean, <laughs> this thing is a beast. It is uh, ready for any track you want to throw at it. The cool thing is it's got the hood tack on it. That was a popular option back in the late 60s. And it's got these second generation Trans Am side vents on there. Or heat extractors, whatever you want to call them. Now let's take another look at the inside if you can see. I know it's kind of glaring. I mean, you got a roll cage, you've got the Corbu racing seats, Momo steering wheel. It's even got a cup holder in there next to this shifter. It looks like a six speed manual. And check it out. I mean, it's it's got a very wide stance, which Pontiac, the company, is known as the wide track company. And the spoiler back here. It's carbon fiber. It's even got vents right here behind the right in front of the deck lid. And to let all the people in the rear know, it does have a Ram Air 5. You can see the emblem there too. So when the, somebody else's car is in their rear view mirror, hey, that car can see that it's got a Ram Air 5. They're not going to beat it. Here we have a 99 30th anniversary Trans Am, and there's also another one down here. Those are both T-tops. Now, if they were a convertible, they'd be one of like 535 if you had a convertible 99 30th anniversary Trans Am. Not for sure the rarity on the T-tops, but they're, they're a very special car. You know, the white with blue stripes, and they had these uh, blue painted wheels here. Beautiful. So they, they definitely stand out with the color combination. Inside you got the white seats and it's got the logo on the headrest there, let you know it's a 30th anniversary. Ooh, that one sounds good. The 89 turbo trans am i could see the emblems as it drove by it'd be a 20th anniversary and 
those cars actually used a V6 motor, not a V8. It was uh, a Grand National V6 though, turbocharged 3.8 liter. And let me tell you, I've owned a Grand National. It's a very fast car. So I'm sure that's pretty fast as well. But all those uh, 89 20th anniversary Trans Ams were white in color, just so you know. So let's go check out this row. This is the first generation Firebird 67 to 69. And this is a modified class, so they're not quite how they rolled off the assembly line. This one's a 67 HO. Now, I'll show you a little something. The uh, ones with the wind wings, those are 67. Because the following year, they did have those little wind wings on the side glass there. So that's a good way to tell the 67 from the 68 Firebird. See here is the 68 Firebird. Doesn't have those triangular pieces, but this one here, the 67 does. And this is a beautiful 67. Look at that side pipe exhaust on there. Twin scoops on it. And then the styling changes kind of drastically to the 69, as you can see. The chrome only goes around the grill and not the whole front with the headlights. So the headlights don't have the chrome around them on the 69. It's a beautiful bird right here. It's convertible. I mean, that red with that white pops. And it's got that nice aftermarket accessory that everybody wants, the cup holders. <laughs> and here we have a 69 Trans Am first year for the Trans Am and they only made 697 of them and out of that 697 only eight were convertibles so if you see a convertible odds are it's likely a replica or a tribute um, now the Trans Ams they had they were white with the uh, blue stripes this one's got black stripes on it so I'd say it's probably a tribute right here I think somebody had changed it it's got the hood tack on it and the 69 Trans Ams had the spoiler on the back here. This is modified class. Remember that. It's not the uh, all original. And here we have a really nice looking one. It's black, but it's got this red, red stripe and red line tires. That really pops on it. And the interesting thing here, we look at this. It's a 4.1 liter overhead cam. So it's an inline six. It's actually an exotic inline six for back in the day because of that overhead cam design. That was uh, not done too much back in the day. That was like very primitive. Now you see overhead cams all the time with like your Honda Civics and your import cars and even a lot of American cars is switching to the overhead cam design. Gets rid of the uh, push rods. It's a little bit more, I guess, efficient design. But back in the day, Pontiac had one. It'd be cool if somebody really developed the overhead cam. Here we have another overhead cam car. This one's a 3.8 liter. Moving right along, we're getting into the second generation here. The Not the whole second generation, but 7076 modified class. And this is a 73 Brewster Green Trans Am. And from the 70s 73s this, i mean this is uh this would denote that it's a 73 trans am this style here because that was the year that the brewster green came out and it's a nice combination here the dark green white interior and he's got the uh aftermarket year one honeycomb wheels so this car would originally had honeycomb wheels but these are a bit bigger than normal and they would have trim rings on it if they were the original ones but these are the year ones so they're bigger than the originals the originals would be 15 by 7 those are probably a 17 inch honeycomb and it's got the 455 v8 got some cars still under covers this one's a 75 Trans Am. I can spot that right off. It's because you look at the front end. That's a 70, 70, 74 to 75 front end on here. But in 75, they came out with this wraparound rear window 
74 would have just been a flat window like the car next to this one so it doesn't wrap around right in here and this one is not a trans am you can look at the um, dash bezel here it's got a wood grain on it the trans am's always had the engine turned with the little swirls swirl marks in them and they had the formula steering wheel which this one does not have the formula steering wheel and this one here is a formula actually and you see the wood grain dash bezel on the formulas the twin scoops on here it's a very clean engine under the hood you know walking down this road this is a stock class this is a third generation 82 to 92 beautiful blue here that one's actually for sale now here's uh what i just talked about a little bit ago the 89 turbo trans am got these gold spoke steering wheels on i mean gold spoke wheels on excuse me <laughs> not steering wheels but wheels and uh t-tops that was one of the options on the 89 turbo trans am you get a hard top or t-top this one is uh got the leather interior i think all the interiors are tan you could choose between leather or the cloth seats not too many options on these but they're very cool very collectible cars and it was the only car to come from the factory with the v6 but it was the grand national v6 the grand national was made by buick and the production ended in 87 so what pontiac did was use the leftover stockpiled engines and put them in these uh trans ams and you can see this one here is a pace car 89 turbo trans am and to my knowledge this was like the first or the only car to pace the uh circuit without any modifications i mean it's just a very powerful v6 here and here's the date that it raced uh indy uh may 28th 89 is when it was uh on the indy 500 so it's it's pretty cool accomplishment for pontiac there having a pace car that they didn't have to modify specifically to keep up with the cars on the track checking out this row right here this is a winner's row so this is a mismatch of different years different generation firebirds it's because these cars have won in the previous year so they're back again so it's kind of like the best of the best this one's called the silver surfer here so you can see why it's all silver very beautiful cars here there's a buccaneer red 73 trans am powered by a 455 it's an anniversary trans am right here and this is a 2002 so this is the last year it's like the commemorates the anniversary of the firebird the 35 years not the anniversary of the trans am it's a WS6 car. It's got the performance package. Another little thing to point out on here. It's got the badge that says Collector's Edition. Now look at this Trans Am here. Looks like it identifies as a GTO. It's got the tiger tail hanging out the Siberian tiger tail hanging out the trunk. <laughs> Ram Air car. The Bandit car right there. The 77 Bandit. Now the 77, 78s, they look almost identical, but if you look at the grills, it's got honeycomb design in the grill. The 78s have a like an X design in the grill. nice looking formula here got the foose wheels on it and you might not be able to see too well inside but it's it's pretty custom inside it's got the recaro seats it's blue and black it's got the double din screen in the stereo area a lot of engine turn trim it's nice looking inside it's hard to see inside though 
There's another 76 Trans Am right there, same year as my car. No way. I said what? Silver on in with red interior. That's a good combination right there. Now over here is my type of cars. That that side over there is a special edition one class. That's the unmodified class. And I imagine a lot of those people have their cars on their trailers this hour of the morning. So you can see a lot of empty spots there. The other one's got them covered up. But that is like how they came from the factory. And here's the class I'm in, the SE2 class, which is modified from the original, how they came from the factory. So this is covers all years of the special edition Trans Am from 76 to 81. Check out the hood bird on this one, very intricate. This one here, it's the kind of opposite version of the Bandit. Came out mid-year of 1978. It's a one year only kind of deal. It's the Sower Gold Special Edition. Now, in 79, subsequently, they kept the collar around, so you could get a 79 Trans Am with solar gold, but it's not considered a special edition on, like, the 78 here. And it's got the gold tinted T-tops on it. And just like the other band of Trans Ams, it's got the gold spoke steering wheel, gold in the dash bezel. And here's a bandit. It's got some louvers on the back. That's a modification right there. Yeah. And it's got cup holders. Definitely a modified yeah. bandit car here. Oh, it's a Thanksgiving car. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a... I have 77. I have a, I have a, a trading of 455 uh, Y82. Um, and look, there's my car. Yeah. The 76 May. 50th anniversary. May. And it is highly, highly modified. Then I have Notice it's got the turbo wheels, which are newer than the 76. That would have been an 80 to 81 turbo wheel, which mine had the honeycomb wheels originally, and I still have them at home. My car has the painted on hood bird. A little crap on the hood right there. <laughs> I had to wipe it off. And uh, I brought a guest with me. If you know who she is, you know who she is. So. <laughs> When he gave it to me, it was assembled, but it was just in uh, the mine originally had a hearse so roof on it, but it's got a Fisher roof. The old roof when I restored it was warped. Every I decided to go with the her, uh, Fisher roof because it's factory stamped and not cut out so like the hearse. So I ended up having to kick the door in. That's kind of my decision on going with that one. So like I it's said, car. it's a highly yeah, modified I, car. I like I'm like not interested in selling it. It's my first car. Yeah, yeah. So but that, the make car, it the way I want it. I, I now figured, yeah. And the unique thing about my owl, my bird, it's painted on, and it's also got color change so paint right here. You can see the like eye and the flame. It's got that chameleon paint yeah. right there. So, Is it a unique like, touch? The car I'm doing now for this guy, he's like, well, what are you gonna do? This? I'm like, we are gonna preserve the original shape of everything. And let's go on down the line some more. I believe this color is called Nocturne Blue. It's a really kind of dark blue. Depending on how you look at it, it kind of lightens up here. Don't quote me on that color, but it, I think it's what it is. They got some nice names for their paint colors on the Firebirds from back in the day. We got a Firebird that was in the Firebird Fest. That's out in St. Louis. I have yet to make it to that event, but I hear a lot about it. Here, it's a pretty good event. This one's a brown Trans Am, almost, depending on how you look at it in the light, you can see it's brown here, but depending on how the light reflects on it and how far away you're from it, kind of looks almost black. Another Formula car over here. And over here in this corner, we got a couple of birds flocking together. Looks like they're 77, 78 cars. Here's the 78 cars, as you can see, you've got the X grill instead of the honeycomb design grill like those all are 78 right there 
Don't know what's under the cover of that one. Let's see what class this is. So this is modified 7778 class. I tell you what, back in the 70s, these cars were just so colorful. They had unique combinations. Uh, nowadays, as far as interiors, you only see usually black or tan. So there's back in the 70s, there was a lot of choices for your interior color. Check out this popping white Trans Am here. I mean, you got the red hood bird, the red uh, lettering on the car. And once you look inside, it's got red seats, red dash, red steering wheel, red interior, red sail panel birds. So these color combinations really set these cars off. It's a shame you don't see too many uh, cars, as far as modern cars, with bright colored interiors. Everybody's gone to the subdued look these days. Even today, with the modern cars, most of them you see are white, black, or kind of like a champagne collar you don't see too many cars with bright collars but back in the day they had a lot of cars with bright collars i mean this 76 trans am here is like a pumpkin spice orange and on this 70 trans am here's another interesting color combination now white with blue stripe that's pretty common on the 7072 but what's uncommon is the red interior on this thing as you can see, it's red, 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 except for the steering wheel. Dash is red, door panels, seats, console. It's really what makes this car pop and stand out from the other white Trans Ams out here. Well, the Firebirds and Firehawks are so hot that they had to bring in the fire department to put out all the fire. Working behind the bushes, what is this? Somebody stuck a Chevy SSR pickup truck into the show. Now this show this year is pretty massive. There's, when I checked yesterday, there was like 492 cars registered. There's obviously a few cars that probably try to come here and not registered, but 492, almost 500 Trans Ams, Firebirds out here. This is a, a pretty massive event. This is, uh, if you like Firebirds, this is the place to come. I mean, let me show you how massive it is. Here's the hotel. You can see there's parking lot here. It's a parking lot kind of in front of the hotel there. Uh, there's space around the side here and around the back too. And then there's this separate parking lot. You go down the hill here with more firebirds. So they're just everywhere. This is like the, the annual migration of birds. Now this baby blue or robin egg blue firebird here, it's a special edition, but hold on a second, it's not a Trans Am, not like you typically think of a special edition, it's a, a spree, so it's more along the lines of a base model firebird here. And in subsequent years, they made uh, another special edition, another special edition, the red bird and the yellow bird, all based on the firebird spree model, as you can see right under the firebird here it says a spree and this car here has the color matching snowflake wheels which you'd see the snowflake wheels on the trans am now unlike the uh, trans am it does not have the shaker hood it's just a plain flat hood there this one's got a spoiler on it Looks like it's been upgraded a little bit in the inside. It's got the Trans Am steering wheel. It's got the Formula Dash here. Usually when you see these uh, Skybirds, usually they don't have a spooler on the back. A little bit more stripped down. So if you're looking for something, you might be able to get these more of a reasonable price if you want something to, somewhat collectible, but without the big dollar uh, money that a special edition Trans Am would bring. Get one of these like a Skybird, Redbird, or Yellowbird. And behind me is another 69 Trans Am. Excuse the noise from the light generator here. Now this one, this one might be a real one here. It's white. It's got the blue stripes unlike the one I showed you earlier with the black stripes. One year they, they actually had a 
genuine one of eight 69 Trans Am convertible show up. That was several years ago and I actually parked next to it. <laughs> So a very valuable car. Haven't seen it since, but uh, there's been a 69 Trans Am convertible out here. So people make tributes or replicas of the convertibles. Now I gotta say this class here has me drooling. I'm sure it will you as well. It's got the uh, non-factory production cars. These are very interesting cars, kind of tuner cars as you would call them. This is the Herb Adams Firebird. And it's it's really cool. A uh, guy named Herb Adams, engineer Pontiac. He, he's known for his suspension work. This is kind of a deal he came out with. You could actually buy various parts from his catalog and soup up your basically Trans Am. It had this own unique uh, decal package. It's very unique uh, hood bird in unique lettering here but you could get all kind of stuff uh, from his catalog you get roll cage and suspension parts this one does not have a roll cage it's got the appearance package on it i don't know what all has been done to it under the hood and here we have the macho trans am this was a tuner by dennis and kyle Mecham, you can see Mecham racing on the windshield there. And I believe like some of the cars they offered were turbocharged. They they were back in the late 70s, so you might see some of these uh Macho Trans Ams, that's what it'll say on it. It'd be one of the cars they've had their hands on. This one here is a 80 Macho. This is a turbo one. Check out these, uh, I think they call them cyclone wheels. That's what they look like. It's just neat, the graphics. Let you know it's a very special car. It's got the matching seats in it, black and red, Recaros. And even the back, it's got this uh, red on it that highlights the car. And check out this car right here. It's a Formula. It's got a vinyl top on it. It's done up as a race car here definitely definitely a nice track car here it's got the you see the roll bar in the back there's not too much glare and check this out this is a third gen trans am with a shaker scoop even though it's fuel injected it's got a five liter it should be a three 305 chevy motor well in the 80s they started going to what they call corporate motors so it'd be a gm motor or chevy motor now if this was black this would almost be like a third gen bandit oh wait a minute this is a bandit too i do know a little bit about these they were made by Choo Choo Customs out of uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And there weren't very many of them made. Maybe a couple hundred, maybe 300. Uh, nobody knows the exact number because they really didn't keep like uh, good records or anything. But uh, the Bandit 2s are very interesting. And what I recall reading about them, they're not actually based on the Trans Am they're based on a firebird but they look like a trans am so there is a continuation bandit for those out there but it was merely an appearance package so if you find one of these they're pretty rare i don't know what they go for a trans am here apparently has been to holly ls fest and here's another fire am this is a third gen fire am dig the honeycomb wheels on the third gen it's got the windows down let's take a peek inside this one looks like it's got just a stock interior i mean check out that stereo way down in there it's uh definitely 80s <laughs> cassette player equalizer all that good stuff 
And it's got like almost like a second gen Trans Am spoiler, what they call the ducktail spoiler. They apparently made one for a third gen Firebird. Down this row, we have a couple of, looks like Firehawks. Those are made by SLP, Street Legal Performance. They started out the last year of the third gen, and they only made like 200 and some of them. And this is the fourth generation Firebird, which they continue to make a, in a little bit better numbers, you know. So if you wanted a third gen Firehawk, that's real. Good luck finding one. Good luck buying one. But if you want a fourth gen, they're kind of attainable. I like this one here is it's a black and gold. It's almost like a banded edition Firehawk. This is a 10th anniversary Firehawk deal here. And it's a 2001. And you can look at the little emblem here. It's got its own unique emblem for a Firehawk. Gold stripes continue on the back here, all the way over the spoiler. And it even has the anniversary decal on the back here below the tail light. Over here is a pewter firehawk. I like this little trim piece right here, right behind the side glass. That's neat. Another firehawk, and even looking in the center caps of the wheels, you'll see the firehawk logo. Convertible Firehawk. And also in this class includes the Comp TAs. I kind of think they're all in silver with this stripe here, but don't quote me on it. That's what I usually see when I see a Comp TA. I see them silver with that uh, stripe down the center here. Now I got to show off this beautiful third gen right here. I mean, look at that paint job that is just like a deep deep red here so beautiful and it's got a unique hood on it as you can see those vents are going into the engine compartment they are not blocked off as you can see inside of it and it's also got this cow induction deal here with vents on it plus it's got the second gen snowflake wheels on it I really, really love the color of this paint. This is probably my favorite of the third gen birds out here. It's like a crimson red. That's the best way I would describe it. A crimson red. And it just, it just looks so deep and mesmerizing. Now here's everybody's favorite TV car superhero. None other than Kit, the Knight Rider car. But Michael Knight is not in sight. I wonder if he left the keys of the car. <laughs> you take a look inside. You can see it's got the Knight Rider interior. You got the yoke steering wheel. And you got that dashboard that wraps around with all the lights and buttons and doodads. <laughs> Definitely a cool... Knight Rider replica car. It's even got in, in the back here, you can see the Knight Rider lunchbox and thermos. And check out this third gen here. It almost looks like it'd be a, a bandit third gen with the gold honeycomb wheels. Now, you used to not see people uh, mismatch the wheels for different generations of Firebirds, but it's starting to become a more common thing. So that's a second generation honeycomb wheel like would be on my Trans Am from the factory. Although these are the aftermarket year one honeycomb wheels. They're bigger than the ones that came from Pontiac. It's nice to see people customize their cars to their own taste. Some people like the factory originals. I, I mean, to each their own. I like it to however it looks the best. If you can make it a little bit better than the factory, then go for it. This one's got a custom paint job on it, the flames and the dual snorkel right there. 
And here's some first gen Firebirds. You can see right here, this this definitely looks superior to 1969. You've got these paint colors you haven't really seen since the 60s. They're kind of pale and light color, this greenish color here. And the, those type of hubcaps. And I mean, look at the interior. It's green. It just, it screams like it came back, came out of time. It's like a time capsule here. You just don't see cars these days in these colors. It's definitely something 60s, kind of 70-ish uh, paint scheme there. Go Here we go into the heavy custom arena. This is 1967 to 76, so first gen and halfway through the second generation Firebirds. This one here, 67 Firebird. It's got some fat meats on the back. Look at those tires. Set up for some drag racing action, that's for sure. It's got a 326 under the hood, unless it's had a transplant. The 69 Bird, it's got some Trans Am parts. The hood is a Trans Am hood, and the spoiler in the back would have been on the Trans Am. And here's a buddy of mine, Gary. I'll give a shout out to Gary. He drives this car everywhere. Keeps it clean as a whistle. He drives it everywhere. It was on the Hot Rod Power Tour. It's been on the Bandit Run. And it's here at the Trans Am Nationals. And you'll notice that it's not white. It's a pace car, Daytona 500. And the reason being it's red, not because it's just his personal taste but they originally intended to do the pace car in red from what i've heard but it did not come to fruition so gary here he just decided to make what they intended to do but didn't do a red pace car trans am and here you can see some of the various events he's been on trans am takeover bandit run Power Tour, Snowman's Run. So this car really gets around. And it's the only one like it. So if you see a red pace car, the turbo hood on it, you'll know it's Gary's car. Now we're getting into the late second generation heavy custom. Got a formula right here. Don't know what's under the hood, but it's in the heavy custom area. Let's check this one out. It is a uh, poor boy's dream. And the engine's not so poor. It's a 502 Chevy motor. That's a big engine. Got these shiny polished snowflake wheels here. And he's even got his picture with uh, Burt Reynolds there. That's pretty cool. And if you look in the back, back right there, He's got an RC car of his car. And check this out. On the rear glass, it's etched in with Firebird emblem. And it even says Poor Boy's Dream on the back. And next to Poor Boy's Dream, we got a, another Macho Trans Am here. Macho, Macho car. <laughs> this one is ready to race. It's your car? I like it. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. What's uh what number is it out of how many? 97. 97? You know how many they made? Uh, right around 100. Oh wow, so you got like one of the end ones. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, they only made these what late 70s? Actually, they're yeah, up to Yeah, 80. there's another one down yeah, there. Actually up to 80. 80? 80, yeah. Oh, so late second generation, yeah, I guess right, is yeah. what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool car, man. Thank Love you. it. Look at that beautiful Pontiac V8 in the Macho Macho Trans Am. Check this one out here. It's got a very custom hood bird. 
It's like a, a flame style hood bird and it even carries on to the shaker hood scoop right there. So if you're into the custom hood birds, a lot of people make their own uh, hood bird, which is nice. You get to see some different stuff out here. In case you think your car isn't show worthy enough and you don't want to bring it out to this show, well, think again because check this class out. They actually have a work in progress driver's class section. So your car can still be in the show and maybe it'll win a, an award in this section here. Check out this base model Firebird. It says grrrr. It's like a license plate you'd see on a GTO back in the day because they call it the tiger, the goat. <laughs> These are the cars that you can see rough around the edges, paint chips in this one. This one here has got 303,000 miles, so it's it's been around the block a couple times. This one here, you can see the hood bird is all faded and nasty looking, but that's okay. We love it. Some people really probably like that kind of deal where it's got kind of like a patina or worn look. And it's straight out of the 70s, got a disco ball in it, even though it's an 81 Trans Am. I guess they didn't want to let go of the disco ball in the disco era. And here we go, it's a cool looking old school 67 Firebird. I gotta be honest, I love it just the way it is. I wouldn't fix it, restore it other than keep it running good. But just being the way it is with its faded paint, it just it looks cool it's a little bit rat rodish yeah but i would just leave it the way it is i think it's beautiful that way and here we got the 89 turbo trans Am, which i seen drive by me earlier as you can see it's seen its better days you can see the bumper here it's not metal it's got that like urethane bumper that's why it's yellow behind the paint there and there's the turbo trans am emblem and looking up close it's the indy speedway emblem even though those cars are all rough around the edges we're glad to have them at the show it's nice to see different things you know not everything has to be a shiny show car not everything has to be factory fresh you can have uh cars that actually i mean you get those old cars like that they got chips and rust and stuff you're not afraid to drive them and that's the the fun part about owning these cars is getting them out on the road and driving them but to each their own some people like to put them in a trailer some people like to win the awards everybody's got their own goals for their cars or their rides but either way they're all art they're they're beautiful they're just works of art now check this 68 firebird out here this thing is slick i mean it's got a two-tone color it's like it's dark gray and matte black on the front here the matte black trim matte black spoiler I just love this color combination this is this is beautiful and i mean it's got the black top here so it goes well with everything i mean rear bumper even around the emblem's got that mac matte black finish on it this thing looks mean let's put it to you that way i don't know if you can see inside but it is a manual transmission here we have a 79 trans am that looks like it's copper in color it's definitely worth every penny spin on it because it's a beauty i'm sporting some Krager wheels those are very popular wheels if you don't like the original but i mean hey the original pontiac had some great designs this one's sporting the cup holder option aftermarket that is Man, that's a beautiful color. It's got a little bit of an orange look to it. Over here, we got a long row, both sides of 4th Gen Firebirds here. Here's the 25th anniversary Trans Am, which would be 1994. You can see they have the blue stripe down the center, 
where the 99 30th anniversary Trans Am has the twin blue stripes. And we'll take a quick peek at the interior here. It's white and it says 25th anniversary on the seat part, not the headrest. And it's got the 25th anniversary center cap on the wheels here. And here's the fourth gen formula. You can look at the front end. It's got a different front end than the Trans Am does. Let's look at these lights on the bottom here. Walk down a ways, I'll find you a Trans Am one. Let's see. Here's the Trans Am right here. As you can see, this lower part of the front end is a bit different. It's got the round lights next to where you put the license plate if you wanted a front plate on a car. And this area right here that curves around is different than the Formula or base model Firebird for that matter. This thing is it's bright and shiny. Everything's polished and chrome and I mean even got mirrors on here so you can look down at the engine. A lot of attention to detail went into this car under the hood. This is the says it's the last of the breed which 2002 was the last year for the Firebird from the factory. Now there's companies out there that have tried to revive the Firebird with the 5th gen Camaro basically converting the Camaro. But this is the last true Firebird here. It's got some interesting decals on it, to say the least. It's got like a checkered flag stripe here. I like the bird on the T-tops. This is a, a very colorful fourth gen here. Red and white. Everywhere. Everywhere. It's got its own unique shifter handle. A lot of, lot of attention to detail. It even says Trans Am here when you open up the trunk. That's pretty cool. Now check out this. This is a 2000 Trans Am, but notice something. Hood's a bit different. It doesn't have the Ram Air hood on it like the Trans Am next to it. And another little touch on this car here. You can see on the center caps here. They put Hot Wheels center caps. A little unique touch I just noticed. Very subtle because it's such a small center cap. Now this Trans Am here, I really like the color on it. It's a crimson type of color as well. And check out these uh, wheels on it. I think they're like the early 4th gen. So like early 4th gen be 93 to 97. And this is uh, when they change the style from 98 to 2002. I think those wheels really look good on this crimson colored 2000 Trans Am. And moving along, check out this pair of Trans Ams, red and black. Now I've seen these cars at night, they got lights in them that light up and they move around and change colors. They even have like this one, I think it's this one here, has a projector of a Firebird, it projects from underneath. And this is a really, interesting custom hood on this one it's got all these vents everywhere and not to be outdone this black one here has its own unique features this one's got a hood bird on it it's kind of interesting how they do a hood bird on a fourth gen with the ram air hood and it's all kind of it's kind of 3d <laughs> it kind of goes dips down goes up dips down again that's why you don't really see hood birds on fourth generation, especially ones with the Ram Air hood, because it's just probably hard to do. I don't know how easy, I've never put a hood bird on, but it seems like that would make it that much more complicated with all the curves you got to deal with versus a flat hood. Got a nice shine on that car. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now let's check out what kind of birds we got lurking around the back side of this Holiday Inn Hotel here. With these two birds just chilling here. And there's more birds up ahead. Check out these awesome birds over here. It's a very 
nice lineup going down here 69 trans am these are owned by a guy i know he's a, a collector he has probably the world's largest collection of firebirds i'm sure he has the world's largest collection of firebirds and this 69 trans am here is an authentic 69 trans am here we have a very rare super duty 455 74 trans am now the super duty 455 is only made two years count them two years the first year 73 they made like 252 i think with the super duty 455 this year 74 they made more but not not too many 943 if i'm correct and these were the top of the line high performance motors you could get from the factory in your firebird and they're highly desirable highly sought after and they're high dollar cars now the super duty engine they had the round port heads unlike the well, the other pontiac motors had the d port heads on the cylinders so that's that's a way you can tell the engines apart the ram air 5 crate motor engines and the ram air 4 motors uh 400 motors they had round port heads as well but most pontiac engines had the d port this one here is rare this is a 76 formula and if you ever come across one of these hoods this is a one year only hood so somebody that has a formula that's a hard to get hood let's just say that it's also a one year only front bumper on the 76 but you can use that bumper on a firebird formula or a trans am but this hood is very specific to the formula so if you come across a 76 formula hood snatch it up it's rare <laughs> here we have a 76 trans am 455 now this would be the last year for the 455 after that they just had the 400 motor as the top line and this one here is a 77 trans am then we move on to the fourth gen and here's a guy i've talked to a bit on facebook interesting this is his uh 70 it's 78 according to the grill here yep it's a 78 trans am just looked on the little tag but it's got solar gold on the front and blue on the back so it's kind of like a two-faced trans am here doesn't know whether it wants to be blue or gold <laughs> Another smoking the banded car, it's 77. The Brewster Green Trans Am, very rare. They didn't make very many in the Brewster Green. And a little bit of trivia for you. There's a John Wayne movie. Uh, the movie's called McHugh. And he drove a Brewster Green 73 Trans Am in the movie. So if you haven't seen the movie, it's pretty good. John Wayne's known for his cowboy movies, but that one's not a cowboy movie. It's a car chase movie, and it's really good. Unfortunately, the car gets destroyed in the movie. It sucks. 69 bird right there. And here's another 74 Super Duty 455 Trans Am in Buccaneer Red. So check out that. It's kind of got those, just those hubcaps there. It's like stripped down. Nothing fancy. But it's got the fancy engine in it. And this one actually, it's a Formula 455. So this is extremely, extremely rare. Now, if you did order a Formula, you could get it with the Super Duty 455. But notice how it's got the Trans Am hood scoop on it. And so if you ordered it that way, you got the Trans Am hood and not the Formula hood with your Super Duty 455 like i said they only made a handful of the formulas just about all of them all of them you'll encounter are the trans am with the super duty 455 here's a, another super duty 455 74 car this one blue it's got a it looks like a lot of metal flake in the paint but it won't have the blues with that motor that's for sure and here we got one of those 301 turbo trans ams with the unique hood bird and the offset 
scoop on it. That's why they have the bird blowing the flame out on the scoop. <laughs> and we got a green 79 Trans Am right here, 6.6. .6 color on this one almost looks like Brewster green here we have a convertible third gen Trans Am now I believe this is probably a 92 I'm not not totally for sure but I'll tell you an interesting thing if this is a factory convertible this would be like the first year since 69 that a Trans Am came with a convertible from the factory now you'll find some convertibles between 69 and like 92 but they're not factory they were done by some aftermarket company so the factory didn't produce the convertibles all that much during the run of the firebird so you had the 67 68 firebird and then the 69 trans am and 69 firebird came from the factory with the convertible and not again from the factory until about i think it was 92 i don't think it was 91 i'm pretty sure it's 92 they came back with the convertible option from the factory and then continued that until the end of 2002 the last firebird rode off the assembly line and i've seen some people just take the cover off of this one so i thought i'd stop by it's a beautiful blue fire am and check out the unique hood bird on this one it's very mesmerizing it's kind of hypnotizing the way you look at it And it's it's got the racing seats in it, the harness to keep you in place, manual transmission. I like the little Pontiac racing there that goes well with the blue and white. It's a one beautiful fire am out in the sun. Oh look, another fire am showed up, or firehawk I should say, not fire am, firehawk. This is Bill Stebbins. He's local to me in Louisville, Kentucky. He's got a YouTube channel. But this is not an original Firehawk. It's a tribute. But it's still really cool to see it. They said third gen Firehawks. They only made like 200 some of them. They didn't make them with T-tops except for one that was like a, after the final run or pre-production or something. It was supposed to be supposedly white with T-tops. So you see a Firehawk. They're pretty much going to be a hard top. I think there's maybe a convertible thrown in the mix too. This one's got a manual transmission, Momo steering wheel. This is a very nicely done car. Like I said, you can check out uh, Bill's YouTube channel. Just look up Stebbins Garage. It's on YouTube. These wheels just go so nice with this car. And what look what showed up at the last minute next to this blue sky bird I just featured. This is a red bird. It's a 78. So here you can see the differences. There's no yellow bird around, but you can see it's got the Trans Am steering wheel, Trans Am dash, gold spokes. Really cool. But it's in a spree fire bird. Collectible nonetheless. So pals, check this out. Late at night, we got a special guest out here at the Trans Am Nationals not other than james bond himself he may be trading in his aston martin for a pontiac trans am when he sees all these cars out here tonight the trans am nationals comes alive with the light show check out this 79 trans am right here it is lit up blue on blue lights all my teachers love the fire man that engine is immaculate it's an Oldsmobile motor, so that'd be a 403 6.6 .6 liter. And even on the inside, it's sporting a little bit of blue lights, LEDs. Oh, hold on a second. What's that in the back seats there? None other than a big NOS bottle. I tell you what, if there's one color that brightens up the night, it's none other than this orange 77 Fire Ram Trans Am right here. Notice the Fire Ram has the unique hood bird on it it's got some multi colors to it it really stands out when you see it against the other trans ams well pals i've shown you a good chunk 
of all the beautiful birds at this show, but the time has come to end the episode. If you enjoyed this, give me a big thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll keep you going with more Trans Am videos and more automotive content. And since you're watching, I'm sure you're a big Trans Am enthusiast. Be sure and check out my previous videos from the Trans Am Nationals as I come up here every year and I cover this show kind of in depth or add humor to it. But anyway, until next episode, don't worry, be random. Tell if you never ran a missing on a random car video. Remember, ring that bell. <laughs> ring that bell. <laughs>